Hi everyone, I'm Tanya Janka and I'm from Canada, that's the accent you're hearing. Thanks for having me. Um, so today I'm going to talk about pushing left and how to do it, and then how to do it like a boss. So I feel um, this is a talk that I created because I wish that two years ago someone told me all of this. So I'm going to reveal all my secrets, basically, that I've learned over the past two years of doing a whole lot of AppSec, or I guess it's getting closer to three years. So it was really nice of Mark to do my slide for me, basically, <laughs> and tell you. So what is pushing left? So the earlier you are in the software development life cycle, uh, the more left you are, right? So we want to bring this over here, and specifically for... Um, Specifically for what I want to do, I want to be invited to the party earlier and I want to go to the development party, right? So this whole talk is going to be about that. Security should be in every single phase, but specifically I want to talk about dev. Okay, so you've probably seen this in the news 500 times, like this group got hacked, that department got hacked, this building got hacked. A lot of times the problem is poorly built software. Right? Um, like people are reusing their credentials everywhere. People have no input validation or very poor input validation. Um, there's instant response but badly executed or they just don't have any. Um, so the next couple slides, what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain what the current state of affairs is to bring us all up to the same level. Because this talk is for basically anyone that works in IT who's not already an AppSec expert. So I want all of us to be able to speak the same language and understand what everyone's saying when they talk about AppSec, what all the different pieces are, what they mean. So some of these slides will be reviewed for you, like these first three or four slides, but don't worry, it's going to get really good very fast because I only have 24 minutes left. Okay, so current state, I feel that we are looking, we're all looking the same way. We're all looking at the perimeter. We're all looking at the boundary around our department. We're all looking at patch management, and that's extremely important, but I feel that's not all we can do. I feel like a lot of security teams don't have any, like from what I've seen, they have very little application or software knowledge, and or they have none. They have none. Like I have explained to a, a previous security team that you can't have SQL injection because there's no database on the application. I had to draw wait boards. Like, because that's how much they don't, some of them don't know software. Some do, but some don't. But I want all of them to know software or have someone that knows software. Um, so this is my cute definition of what I think application security is. It's the art of making software secure. Um, a lot of people, in my imagination, what a lot of people think it is, is it's like the security team thinks it's something that they would like the software developers to do for them. And the software developers are unaware that it's supposed to be the responsibility according to the security team. So I feel this is an issue. So um, another thing that I see is penetration testing. Okay, so a lot of places they build software, they do this giant waterfall, or they do a bunch of little waterfalls and call it agile, or they just like release things randomly and call it agile, or some people actually really do agile or DevSecOps. And um, basically, a lot of what I see in places I've worked is they hire a pen tester right at the very end, which I would call pushing right, if that is your first security experience for your app. Right? So right at the very end, where there's no time left, they give the report in like two days before you go to prod, and then there's like all this stuff that they found, because you have not looked at security previously, they're going to find a gold mine in your app, right? And then, and then the developers have to stay up all night, which is terrible. And they fix like one or two critical things, they don't test it enough, and then they just push it out anyway. And they promise you they'll fix the rest in the next release. Okay, so this is not ideal. A lot of places I've seen, they don't do anything. They don't even run a little scanner, they don't do anything, and they just release it to the public facing internet where all the bad guys are. And they're like, I hope this works out. This is not good. Okay, so this slide, because you're at a security conference, I hope you've heard of the CIA triad, confidentiality, integrity, availability. I'm going to go over it briefly because there's probably one or two people that are like, but that's not me, that's security. This is why security bothers software developers. This is why we are in your office. 
is why we send you emails. This is why we don't ignore you. Because we want to make, make sure that your app, let's say it's a healthcare app, that all the healthcare stuff is confidential. No one sees your stuff. We want to make sure the integrity is correct. I don't want to look like you've got a disease you don't have. And I want to make sure it's available. So if you need to check your information, it's actually available. I put this slide up because I was a software developer 17 years and no one ever told me this. That's a long time to not know it's the most important thing that we want from you, right? So this is the current state of affairs from what I see. I see like everyone not sharing their information. I see silos. I see security and developers not holding hands and hugging and high-fiving. Maybe not hugging. I feel high-fiving should happen. Okay, so this is where I think we should learn to push left. And I have a plan for us to push left and be completely, totally awesome at it. So, imagine you're building a house, and you like you, you and your spouse have dreamed about this forever, and you, you're, it's almost done. So it's been going, and we've got the everything's almost done. And then like a week before it's done, you're like, oh honey, I wish we'd put that second bathroom in because like with our ten kids, I feel that maybe two bathrooms would have been a good idea. If you put that bathroom in, then it's going to be terrible. It's going to cost you a ton of money. Uh, it's going to make your project late, for sure. It's going to be like a band-aid. You're going to have to like take your walk-in closet, turn it into a bathroom. You're going to have like pipes over top of it. It's going to be terrible, right? It's the same with software. And it's the same with security fixes. So if we fix things earlier, i.e. pushing the, it's going to be cheaper, faster, better. The developers will like us better because we're not making them stay up late at night, right? Before the release date. Because they were ready. It's just we got them the information late. We want to get them the information earlier. So... Let's see how we can do this. Okay, actually, before I start the slide, so I really like food. So I've prepared an application security program to food. So, well, to a meal, right? So let's start with the main course. So this is all the stuff that I feel you need to be able to proudly say I have an application security program where I work. <laughs> you don't have to do all of these things for every single app that you have. But if you don't have the capability to hire out or get or whatever, like if you don't do any of these things, like I feel you need to work on it. So the main course, you should be able to do vulnerability scans or vulnerability assessments. Not the same thing. Vulnerability assessments way better than just running a little scanner. The scanner is going to miss stuff, but it's way better than doing nothing. Um, you should be able to do threat modeling which I'll go into more detail later, but it's just kind of a brainstorming session about if you were going to break your app, how would you do it? And then, obviously, you try to fix those things. Um, secure code review or static code analysis, which are not the same thing, but they're kind of, they're kind of similar. They hold hands, um, which we'll go into more. And penetration testing, if you have mission-critical applications with sensitive information or public-facing, like, you need to protect your crown jewels. So if you can't do these things, you need to work on it. This is the main course. You haven't been fed if you don't have these things. So up next is gravy. Do you know what this is? This is my joke about Canada. This is poutine. This is our national dish. We eat that on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it, it looks like that. Um, <laughs> so, okay, so gravy. So I really like condiments, like gravy, sour cream. Um, so this is stuff that I feel that if you want to have a really nice application security program, like a thorough, so like let's say you actually have money and you have an application security team that is more than just one person, like mine, which is me. Imagine you have multiple people and you want, and you have lots of developers and you want to do a really good job. So you would, okay, so first thing I would do is start educating the developers. What if we spoke to them like they were people? <laughs> um, what if, like, a course at SANS costs like, an amount of money I could never pay out of my current budget. And I certainly can send all the developers. But what if I start making workshops about all the things that I found the most times in my vulnerability assessments I've been doing and how not to do those things, right? Like, um, what if um, I did, like, talks and lunch and learns and lessons and awareness and, like, I went to a developer's desk and helped them with what they need, right? Like, start a relationship. Um, what if I created secure coding guidelines in conjunction with the developers, not as a stick to hit them with, but like with them. Be like, so you guys use Java, what framework do you use? What's
what's the best way to do these things? What if we made a reference for all the developers to look at? Oh, I'm going to do this. How should I do it? Let me tell you. Explain what we want from that. Um, you could develop a secure code library, which where you put all your secure code samples in, so that why ever reinvent the wheel, right? If something's been tested and we know it's secure, let everyone just reuse the same thing. Um, also, don't put stuff in the code library without permission from the developers. That's rude. It's like going in a woman's purse. Don't do it. Um, another thing is a responsible or coordinated disclosure program, or even just like just put a link on your website that says. If you see a security flaw, please report it here and just have an email address and then answer the email address. It can't go to nowhere. So if someone's using your application and they're like, let's say you're a government department or a healthcare agency, and they're like, oh, I switched this number at the top and then I got Joe's records instead. Don't you want them to report that to you instead of putting it on Reddit? Because I've seen that happen where they emailed the contact us, no one answered them. So they're like, I know what I'll do. I'll tweet it. That's that's a good no, no, please tell me, tell me first, right? So give them the option to tell you. Okay, so you don't always have to have dessert, but when you do, it's delicious. It's awesome. So this is the extra special stuff for when you need a very high level of security assurance, right? So um, let's say you're like uh, in Canada, we call it CSIS or CSC. Um, in other countries, I don't know all of your security groups' names. Or like, let's say um, you're a military uh, developer, like you create um, weapons or something scary. Like you would want to protect that, right? Or let's say you're Coca-Cola and you make a delicious beverage and you don't want anyone to get your recipe, right? You want to protect it really well. So these are like for the very high level of assurance. Um, so that would be bug bounty programs. So a bug bounty program is do it outsourced, like by hiring someone like Bugcrowd or HackerOne, where they have all these security researchers working for them. You give them a fake version of your application to test, and they just go crazy. And then they hack the, like they hack it like no one's business. And then they send you reports, and then you pay a bounty if they find something. If it's good, if no one else has found it, you give them money. You say thank you for telling me instead of selling it on the dark net. I appreciate that. <laughs> If you already are doing all the other stuff, this is a good bait for your buck to get those really obscure things. If you're a really big company, um, like in Canada, we have Shopify. They are amazing. Our application security is amazing. And um, or like Microsoft, Google, like big companies, you can run your own bug bounty program and do a totally awesome job of it. But if you're a small group or you don't have a big AppSec team, hiring it is a possibility. Another thing you could do is red team exercises. So who's blue team here? If you're a defender, you're blue team. If you write software, you're defending. If you work on the perimeter, if you do most security jobs, you're a defender. But if you're an attacker, you're red team. So I'm also that. Uh, I joke that I'm purple team because I play both sides. So red team exercises is where you hire, or if you're lucky, you have your own team, and they actually attack you. You pay people to attack you, usually your production systems, Usually you don't tell them what to attack, uh, like there's some rules of engagement, but you don't know what they're planning. It's unlike a pen test where it's like, I'm going to hit these things, this is how I'm going to do it. A red team exercise is like, I hope you see us coming, right? And if after three days they haven't got anywhere, like you're amazing. If after three minutes they're like, well, I have all your passwords and I have admin on all your boxes, and you're in trouble. The reason why you want to do a red team exercise is so you can know what real threats are. So like when you do like um, threat modeling, you're like, I think this might happen. This could happen. This seems like it. I read this on the internet. I've seen previous examples of this. But when you do a red team exercise, you know for real what your actual threats are. You know for real what the risk is. It's, it's better, it's nice to not do paper exercises. So this last one, it, it's in the dessert column because I think it's delicious. But you don't have to wait until you have an amazing security uh, level of assurance to do it. You can do this at any level. And this is Capture the Flag Contest. Um, so I'm the chapter leader for OWASP Ottawa. And every year I run a really small CTF. We have other CTFs in our city. Um, that's short from, that's what we call it. And um, basically a whole bunch of people get together in a room and they bring their laptops and you put up a vulnerable system and people have it. They solve security problems, all sorts of things, encryption, everything you can think of. 
And then as you get you solve things, you get flags, and you change your flags for points, and whoever has the most points at the end wins. Why would you want to do this at work? Well, it will make the developers actually like the security team because it's fun and it's like cross training for your brain. You know how runners don't just run, they scratch and they do weights here, they do other stuff. But you can't just do one thing all the time. You really need to exercise all of your brain, right? Another good thing is that it gets developers thinking about security, which is what I want so badly, right? And the last thing is it's really great for recruiting because if you have a developer and they won, you should probably give them a job on your team. <laughs> Because they've gone that for this. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, so there's another slide here, and I read it my slides like 500 times, like most speakers do, like literally 10 minutes ago I was doing that. Okay, so now that I've told you like a lot of ideas of what an application security program could be, I bet in your head all of you are like, oh my gosh, Tony, this sounds fantastic. How can I become a part of this? Thanks for asking. Okay, so the thing you could do is you could test your code. So this is not just a talk for developers, it's for everyone in security, right? So if you're a project manager, you could give your developers time to test their code. If you are a regular, like a person manager, you could buy them a tool to help them. Like a, a, you could, there's even free web proxies you could give them. You could pay for training for some of them. Like there's lots of different things you can do to enable the testing of code in the development phase instead of right at the very end. Right? Um, so most people, if you're doing a web app, you use a web proxy. And uh, it sits, so imagine here's you, here's your browser. It sits like this between you and your web server. And everything goes through it. And it watches you as you're using your app. It listens to you, it figures out what's going on. And you can examine things. You can intercept it, stop it, change it, work it. And you can see how your website works in a new way. Right? So. You can find all sorts of things. There's free vulnerability scanners, there's very pricey ones, and they're varying in quality and how you use them and how much training you require. But I feel like testing your code, if you have no application security happening, this is like your number one best bet for getting good bang for your buck with the least amount of training and money required. Okay, so another thing, oh, okay. Caution. When you test your code, if you're using a vulnerability scanner, it's a hacker tool. Right? Thank you. I was just wondering about that. Um, okay, so vulnerability scanners are hacker tools. So I, I put this slide in because I don't want any of you to get into trouble. So don't get, you know, your own license for Burp Suite uh, and then be like, I'm, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to Amazon.com and then I'm going to hit Active Scan Attack. Ooh, that's illegal. You always want to have permission to test code from someone who has the actual authority to test it. So if I'm like, you have permission, you don't have permission. You need like whoever the application owner is, if you're in the business, or if you're on the outside, you need a contract, you want it in writing, you don't want someone to say it over beers, like, yeah, that'd be cool. That's not acceptable, that's not enough. You need to cover your derriers uh, and make sure that you're covered. Another thing about, this is the longest slide ever, there's a lot of cautions with testing your code. I hope I'm not scaring you away. Um, so vulnerability scanners, like if you use an automated tool when you test your code, they will eat up resources like crazy. So don't point it at your little tiny weak dev server at 9 a.m. on Monday and then go get a coffee because everyone on your team's going to hate you. You need to make sure you share the resources. You need to make sure it can mess up your data. So you might want to take a backup of your data. Don't aim it at prod, aim it at dev. Um, this is an activity, like you might want to just take a, a bit of time to learn about it and make sure you tell your boss what's going on. Give the security team and your boss a heads up when you're about to scan uh, until they're used to it, unless you're doing it locally. So you can scan locally on your own machine if you have that power, but often you're going to be scanning onto your dev server. Tell people because you might trigger off your intrusion prevention or detection system or something else and like set off a security incident and then that's embarrassing. So like tell people what's going on, especially the first time, to get, get them used to it, work them into it. Um, but this is something that if you're a software developer, you could go to work on Monday and you could talk to your boss about it. Or if you're a manager, you could talk to your employees like, would anyone be interested in doing that? Because developers are passionate about what they do. Like they're creative, they're building code. Like they're usually very proud and they want to build the best 
best software they can. Like, it's us in this room to enable them to do that. Okay, threat modeling. This is where the security team and the developers get together, kind of hang out, and talk about an app, and they say, if you were going to attack your app, how would you do it if you were going to break it? And they're like, oh, did you know if you do this, this happens? I did not know that. Thank you. No, it's test for that later. Um, developers have this different way of looking at things in the security team, and you want to know what they're thinking. So if you're a manager, set up this brainstorming session. Like, it doesn't need to be hours and hours, and you don't need to, like, I've seen some of the talks where they talk about threat modeling, and there's, like, five books, and there's, like, this huge process. And maybe one day you can get to that, that stage if that's where you need to be because you need that level of assurance. But if you're starting at the beginning and you want to start pushing with, you just want to have a meeting with them, just talking to the developers and asking them about their app. You're going to learn so much you have no idea about. Um, reviewing code. So I'm not in love with reviewing code. I find it really hard, but it's important for quality. But also, you can find all sorts of things wrong with it. Search for your threat models. Go look where any security activity is happening. So like, oh, encryption happens here. Go have your buddy look at your code and make sure it's okay. Like, I would like to talk more about this, but I'm running out of time. But like static code analysis um, is like an automated version of that. And come talk to me after. This slide's better. Okay, so this is the last slide. The thing you can do, it's not. But this is the, this is the one I want to get across. You can write better code. So learn about security. Give your developers time, give them two hours a week to, to learn about this. Um, train yourself. There's so many free courses. There's so many like very cheap courses where you can learn a ton really quickly. Um, there's lots of resources online. There's really no, like if you want to know, you can know and it doesn't need to cost a lot. Um, you can become the security expert on your team so everyone comes to you. Okay, so another thing I want to talk to you about is OWASP, which is your new best friend forever. This, you're in an OWASP event right now. We have chapters all around the world. We have one in my, uh, in my city. We have free events. We usually feed you pizza. We really want to teach you for free anything about application security that you want to know. We have, um, like, if I go back a slide, like Zap. Um, we have so many tools. We have free software. We have free cheat sheets on everything. Like, go to our wiki and check it out, OWASP.org. I know it sounds like an advertisement, but it's for a thing that's free. You can join OWASP. You can become, separate yourself from your peers, right? Like, if you go to OWASP meetings, you're going to meet all the right people. You can ask them any technical question you want, and lots of them know the answer. It's amazing. It's a reason. I would be nowhere without OWASP in my career. Really, like, there's nothing better in my whole 20 years in IT that has happened to me since OWASP. So, thank you so much for having me. Um, does anyone, can I ask a question? Does anyone have any? Oh, there's no, okay. Come see me after. I love talking. <laughs> Thank you.